God, we worship you, we worship you, you are here, mending every heart, we worship you, we worship you. Yes, you are right in the darkness, my God. That is who, that is who you are. Lord, we know you'll be a light in the darkness, my God. That is who, that is who you are. Lord, we know you to be in the midst of the state of the world and everything going on. We still know you to be a way in the dark. Yes, you are a light in the darkness, my God. That is who, that is who you are. You are the way Lord, to bless people. My God, that is who you are. The way the world. Mama's keeping your light in the darkness. My God, that is who, that is who you are. Even when we don't see it work, even when we don't feel work, my God, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Oh, you're full of people, we know you're the people. That is who you are. A way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, yeah. Way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, oh Lord. Even when we don't see you working, even when we don't feel you working, my God, that is who you are, yeah. We make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, thank you. Amen, girl, now. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, God. Amen. Um, okay, y'all, so I want to play a worship song that's just been, was really just on my heart to share with you guys. So I'm going to share that now. Faithful through the ages. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenants, faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven to be just what you say. Oh, the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak the word. It 
great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Oh,
Yes, I'll still bless you in the middle of the storm, in the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you in the middle of the road when I don't know where to go. I'll still bless you in the middle of my storm, in the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you. When I'm in the middle of the road and I don't know which way to go, I still bless you. I still bless you. I've got a reason to bless you. going to get into the word and today I'm not speaking and one of my best friends is speaking um Juliet um the topic is miracle signs and wonders um so Anne leads invading spaces and if you don't know already that's a bible study that she has every Tuesday at 6 p.m Cali time PST time I mean that boy every Tuesday, you know what I'm saying? So if you're looking for a weekly Bible study, that's the one to go to. She's also a hairstylist for TV and film. So hit her up for all your hair needs um, after the course. Okay, so I'm going to pass it over to Anne. Hey, y'all. I'm so happy to be on here with you guys. Um, Thank you, Ashley, for sharing your space with me as we invade space together, right? Um, So let's go on and get into this word, honey. It's crazy because yesterday um, was our Bible study, Invading Spaces, and my dad and my mom was in here listening. And we was, I was telling them, I was, oh, I'm leading tomorrow. We're talking about miracle signs and wonders. He was like, well, what's one of the first miracles that Jesus did? And I'm just like, you tell me. My dad is like a Bible scholar, and I really think he was best friends with Jesus, okay? So he was like, when Jesus turned water into wine, I was like, that's it. So let's go and get into miracles. So our scripture, I'm going to kind of jump around, um, but our main scripture is from Mark 16 and 17 through 18. So Mark 16, 17 through 18. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Mark 16. 17. So if we're there, good. I'm about to pray us in real quick so we can make sure this word and no distractions come against us in the name of Jesus. 
All right. It's the Holy Spirit. We just invite you into this room with us, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that you've given us grace and mercy that we can come boldly to your throne. God, we just allow our hearts to be just saturated and filled with you, Lord God, because your word is sharper than the two-edged sword. And so, Father God, we ask that you just lead us tonight. Um, any distractions, any frustration, anything that's just trying to come into this space tonight, Lord, we send it back to the pits of hell. We thank you that angels are surrounding us right now as we give this word, Father God. Um, Lord, let the Holy Spirit speak in and through me lord god because you know your kids on this um zoom father god you know exactly what all of us need lord god so i pray that as i decrease that you increase in me lord god to touch the hearts and the mind of your kids on tonight in the name of jesus christ we pray amen amen all right so mark 16 17 just so y'all know i asked the food so just bear with me okay okay um, so Mark 16, 17. So it said, and these signs shall follow those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues um, and they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will, no, it will by no means hurt them and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So as I was studying, I was like, okay, Lord, we heard about miracles, we heard about signs, we heard about wonders, but like, what does it look like? You know, what is it and do we believe? So my first question before we get started is asking yourself, like, do you believe in miracles? Like, even though if you haven't seen God do a miracle, I'm pretty sure he has, a lot of us are old enough to kind of see certain things, but do you believe in miracles? And do you have faith to believe in the miracles? Because at the end of the day, anything, that starts with God, starts with faith. We couldn't believe without having faith in Jesus first. So that's the first, like, do you have faith and do you believe in miracles? Hope everybody say yes. Y'all can raise your hand because I just want to make sure we don't all want a court right now. Good. Okay, good. We don't want a court. So we have faith. We believe, right? Um, good. So so in the scripture, it said these, these, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they'll be able to cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. Um, so I was looking, I was like, well, God, what is a miracle? What does that look like to be intervening in our life? What does a miracle look like? And a miracle is a supernatural. God's putting his super on our natural. We can't do it. So God is like, I need to come down to put my super on your natural, to intervene in what you have going on. And always, miracles always come in the impossible, right? And so, and so even with that, it's like, God is like, it's something that you can, can't do, so I need to bring heaven down on earth, right? Um, signs is basically an event or an activity, supernatural or not, that will authenticate the person of Jesus. So Jesus is the son. So he is the one that's doing these miracles, and without him, we can't believe, right? Um, and also in Exodus 3 and 12, it says, and God says, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. And when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So basically, as we're walking, as God is showing us different miracles, he's like, I will be with you. Jesus was the man of miracles. This man walked past you and you healed. That's a sign. So you're seeing these signs follow. You're seeing these wonders happen as well. Um, and wonders is just a supernatural breaking into the natural world of man and doing what is impossible by physical, um, by natural physical laws. Um, so wonders are supernatural breaking into the natural world of man and doing what is impossible. Um, and I love that because it's, it's beyond our understanding, right? We can't really comprehend a miracle, a sign, or a wonder. None of that is so big. And as I was doing this, when we, when the Lord first allowed me to start um, my Bible study, the first thing was miracles, like breaking through of our natural tendency of how we do life, right? And so with that, it's like, I remember when I first started doing, I was like, Lord, I would just want to see uncommon things it happened in my life. And so I remember first that I started doing it, we did a seven, um, seven day thing. And each, each of us wrote down something. And I remember when I started doing, I just started speaking, my language changed too, as I was believing God for certain miracles to happen in my life. And I remember like it was yesterday, as I was speaking my as in my language started changing. Um, I remember I was working and remember 
you have to be obedient to and walking in. You have to participate in the miracle. The miracle ain't just going to happen. We have to participate in the miracle as well. So as we're walking, God will show you different things. He'll show you different signs. He position you for a purpose in that space so the miracle can happen, but you have to be obedient when he tells you to move. And so I, you know, I'm over here, I'm just chilling, I'm working. And, and this was just around the same time that I was just like, God, I'm believing you for uncommon things to happen, speaking those things that be not as though they were, but my mind still couldn't comprehend the miracle. Like I can say, I want something else, but God is like, I know you want that, but I'm gonna make it bigger. That's a miracle. Cause I didn't fathom that to happen. And I remember like it was yesterday, this guy walked in there and he's like, I need a wig made. I was like, all right, bet. But God was just like telling me, don't put yourself on, basically. Don't tell them what you do. I was like, all right, bet. I'm just going to chill. And as I was right there, the wig that he made, the, the wig that he needed made was something that I could do. So I chilled because he told me not the same thing. So as I was just sitting there, the woman that was working with me, he needed a dread wig made, like locks. And she said, oh, Ann can make it. And I was like, okay, cool. What you need done? Cause that was my access to open up. And if you don't follow direction, the Holy spirit, you will lead yourself in some, into something that you didn't have no business doing, or I would have to put myself on. And I didn't want to have to do that because I would have to keep myself in that position. Right? So as I'm believing God for miracles, I'm in a space that God told me to go to, I'm talking and I asked him the wig, what he needed made. He's like, I need this dread wig, this dread, this dread wig. And it needs to be done by this day. And y'all, my mind could not conceive what I was getting ready to walk into. So I'm asking, I was like, oh, what do you need the wig for? Because, you know, we're in L.A., everybody's celebrity, you know, you talk, you don't know who you're talking to. And blew my mind. So as I'm, I'm asking him questions, I'm like, so what do you need the wig done for? He was like, oh, you know, we're working on Space Jam too, and it's about to be on LeBron's head. I'm like, on who? Oh, so I'm making a wig for LeBron James is about to be on Space Jam too. This movie ain't been out since Biggie died, so y'all about to make it, and I'm about to make the wig. Oh, y'all, I couldn't act a fool in front of him, but when he left, yo, I ran to the bathroom and I was shouting. <laughs> I was shouting everything because it was beyond my understanding, but I was expecting to be. I was expecting to walk in a miracle. Cause that's what I asked for. And a lot of times when you ask for miracles, you don't know where the Lord about to impart that thing because it's going to shift the whole course of your life. Right? So from that day four, from that day, me speaking certain things into my life, things just start happening. Right. Um, and one of the things that God was showing me is that miracles should fill you up. It should fill you. You know, a lot of times we're trying to fill certain voids in our life and God is like, the miracle that I bring into your life, it's going to fill you up. It should make you whole. Miracles are divine and we know God is divine. So it's coming from a divine God. So when God imparts something in you, it's not going to leave you empty, but it's going to fill the whole course of your life. It should break some norms um, that you're used to walking in too. And also when God performs miracles, it's an advancement of the kingdom. The kingdom gets blessed when the Lord drops heaven's resources basically on earth, right? And so when Jesus will walk past people and heal them, that was an advancement of the kingdom because now they're seeing this Jesus, this man walking past people and getting healed. So now it's like, dang, I have to believe because I see the miracles that you keep performing in front of my face. That's the sign. That's the wonder, right? Um, just like when God um, sent Jesus to heal Jairus, it was an advancement to the kingdom because that man said, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. So his faith at that part, at that point in his life was being tested. And also he, it, he was required to believe for the miracle. So it takes faith to actually believe into the miracle. Um, and so by that, his faith was restored. And also because he's seen what Jesus did, he was like, I bet I'll help your unbelief, but I also hear your son so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see and walk in that as well. Um, and when I was, so we know acts, acts have all the miracles, um, signs and wonder that's just happening there. But one particular, um, scripture caught my attention, um, was in Acts 413. It's in the NIV version. Um, it says when they saw the courage 
of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been doing the healing standing there, there was nothing they could say. These men were unschooled, ordinary people, just like us but they was walking with Jesus. It was a sign that they was walking with Jesus because they was performing the same miracles Jesus was performing. So Peter and John was with Jesus. They seen some, the people seen something in them that made them know that they was walking with Jesus. So basically the Lord was like, well, who were you with? Who were you with or who weren't you with to make you believe what you believe about me and miracles? He was like, is it your fear? Because a lot of times we don't believe because we have some type of doubt, some type of fear somewhere. Is it your shame that got you not believing that God can do this miracle in your life? Is it guilt? What do you see? What are you seeing with your natural eye that you need to turn your natural eyes out and you need to put your spiritual eyes on? Because miracles can't be understood. Somebody get healed, they had a disease for 12 years. My girl went to Jesus, she said, Lord, I need to be healed, honey. I've been sick for 12 years. I went to all these doctors, Lord. They couldn't even do nothing. They couldn't even touch me. They couldn't even see me. They said I was dirty, Jesus. But her faith made her way. He said, daughter, go about your way. Your faith had healed you. So the miracle that she needed was required of her faith to heal her. She believed long enough. I don't know. 12 years is a long time for me to be trying to get healed. I was like, Lord, you know what? Just take me, honey, because this ain't it. But I'm pretty sure the Lord restored her faith to the point that she said, Lord, I got just a little bit more push to go get this mirror. I just got just a little bit more faith. I got I just, just a little bit. Cause one thing I love about the Lord, he said, all you need is a little bit. You just need a little bit of faith to believe me for a miracle, a sign and a wonder. I'm not requiring that much of you. I just said, if you believe, what has your belief off about miracles? What has your faith down? Where does God need to restore your faith to believe him for a miracle? Is it in your finances? Is it in your relationship? Is it with your family? I feel like a lot of times family is the most difficult part to have faith. You be like, Lord, they ain't been saved since I was born. And I don't know if you can really do this. But listen, if he can restore my sister, honey, my sister, I don't know what she was out here doing, but the Lord blessed her. And I just kept praying because, you know, the, the prayers of the righteous avail as much and they have much power. And so if you feel like, you know, you've been praying and you ain't seeing results or you've been praying like, God, I've been believing you for a miracle. I ain't seen you come through yet. It can happen because the prayers of the righteous avail as much. And God hears when we don't even think he's hearing. And I love the Lord because he said, I don't sleep nor slumber. Just because you out here sleeping and sobbing when you sleep, that don't mean that I, we don't operate the same. He said, I'm, I'm not man that I should not lie nor repent, right? So I just, God is just too good to be doing all that. And also in John 14 and 12, the Bible says, Ver, uh, verily I tell you, whoever believes in me will do great works that I have been doing. And they would do even greater things because I am going to the Father. So just like um, Peter and John, when they were together, God is like, you're going to do the same thing, but you got to realize what you're operating in. Are you trying to do miracles in your own strength because it's never going to work? Or have you partnered with me? Have you participated with me to say, hey, Lord, I'm believing for salvation in my family. Are you trying to throw the word at them or are you really allowing the Lord to use you to work that thing out? All right, God, I'm believing for a job. I'm believing for a miracle. I'm believing you for financial increase. Have you partnered with God? Because we have to partner with him and not go before him. Because he said, I go before you. I level the mountain. So if you don't allow the Lord to level the mountain, then you're going to get to the mountain. You're going to be stuck. You're be like, Lord, where you at? He was like, well, you went before me, so... You turn back around and come back around and let me walk up. And that's called surrendering. We have to surrender those things to the Lord because we don't know better, right? And God is like, you're supposed to do greater work. So if, it, if you're in yourself, no greater works is going to come because I need you to be with me. I need you to partner with me. I need you to participate with me in these miracles that 
I, I need y'all to do, right? I remember when I was living in Atlanta, um, I was working at this hair school and I was dealing with people all day long. And I will never forget this moment where I was in the front and this girl came, she was like on my side and I was turned and she was talking, she was like, you know what, I just, I'm, I'm hurting. You know, she was just dealing with a lot of health issues and I just started speaking in the spirit. And I remember I just touched her. I just literally, and y'all, I don't think I got no healing powers, but you know, the gifts of God just flow, right? Whenever you call on the Lord, hey, Lord, I'm believing for healing, it just flow. So I'm sitting there and I'm praying in the spirit. She's just talking like, you know, I'm sick. I don't feel good. I didn't go to the all this stuff. And I just prayed about, I said, the blood of Jesus. Yo, this girl said, Ann, when you touched me, I felt healing from your hand onto my body. It blew my mind because you know how you'd be like, who am I? I was like, who am I for this girl to say, you, by you touching me, I felt healing powers flow through you to me. And at that point, I was like, yo, you got to have your girl out here doing some stuff because I felt like I was walking with Jesus to do this. And it wasn't out of my strength by any means necessary because I'm not good enough to do no miracle, but it show how God can use us to perform those same miracles in our lives and to bless other people. Um, and so I just hollered. I was just like, wow, like this is a sign, Jesus. Like your girl really out here walking with you. But it was because of my faith. I couldn't have faith to, to touch her, to heal her. And also where your relationship with God is. Because if you're struggling in your relationship with God, a lot of times it's because you see God how you see people. And that has to, your mind also had to be renewed in that too. Because as people, we're going to fail each other. And that's kind of, I just want to put that out there. We're going to fail each other. We're going to need forgiveness. We're going to need some love. We're going to need some grace. But God won't fail. He never fails, right? And so your faith in God and where your relationship is, God, you know, if you are struggling, it is what it is. I love God because he said, you come both to the throne of grace. You can receive mercy. I forgive you. It's nothing. But he wants to restore your faith too so you can operate and walk in miracles so you can see the miracles manifest in your own life. And you can't have faith for you to see the impossible because it's a lot of situations, even today, that is super impossible. you like, nah, this ain't going to happen. But one of the things I love about God, he told me one day, I was like, God, this just ain't going to happen for me. It's cool. We just gonna lead us right. He was like, you can't, but I can't. I said, ooh, I thought I had a friend. So with that, it's like, God is like, it may be hard for you, but it's easy for me. You call on me when you need the hard stuff to be moved. Cause he said in his word, if you say to that mountain, be removed and be cast down into the sea, it will be moved because of your faith, right? And faith opened doors to miracles. If you study the Bible and just the history of the Bible, you find that God moves on earth and does a miracle. It's because somebody believed. Abraham was the father of faith and he, had, he got what he had because he believed. So we operate now, we walk in that. And if you ask like, does God still do miracles today? He does. Every time you stretch your faith, God does miracles. Breathing to me is a miracle. The fact that airplanes can be in the air without nothing hold to it, baby, it's a miracle. I flew here from LA, honey. And I'm like, God, you gotta be the pilot because baby, I don't trust nobody. But that's a miracle that that thing can go so high and we not crash. I believe that's a miracle. And so my question is uh, for all of us, it's like, what's the mountain in your life that needs to be moved? What's the mountain? What's big? What you think is just big? It's like, nah, Lord, this ain't going nowhere. This rock, you know, it's a little too heavy. I can't move it on my own. What's the thing you already decided would never change? Lord, you know what? My money ain't never going to change. It's going to stay like this. I'm going to be at this job forever. Lord, my relationship, it ain't, you know what, Jesus? Cool. It ain't even going to be better. I'm, a, I'm good right here. What's that thing that you like? It ain't going to change. And a lot of times we put a period where God put a comma. I know y'all heard that. We put a period where God put a comma. He was just like, I'm too big for that. God's like, I'm too big for you to stop the process of what I want to do past where you thought that things can stop. 
And God is in the mountain moving business. So once you doubt and un underestimate the power of God, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're underestimating the power of God, right? God can't be fixed in no box. Um, so if we look at Matthew 13, 58, Jesus did not do any miracles there because of their lack of faith. Can you imagine being in a circle around all your friends? So just imagine you're around all your friends and you're sitting there, you in your mind, you didn't tell nobody. So we all in the circle, you're like, I'm believing God for this. Everybody got their own belief. I'm believing God for this. But you know, if one person doesn't believe it's not done, I'm going to be all y'all up. Y'all better be believing. You feel me? Like, we got to get on one accord. We got to deal with that faith because that's the only thing that, yo, I was studying. God was like, the only thing that pleases me is faith. Nothing else pleases God but faith. So why are we not believing? And that itself is a root that you have to deal with with Jesus. God, why am I believing you in this area of your life? asking those questions, those tough questions, especially in quarantine. God is getting to the root of stuff. He's a rooting. He's showing you you. You know, a lot of us kind of said that he's showing you who you really are because the preparation that's needed for this next normal breaking life that we're about to walk into is necessary to build our character. Our characters are being built right now. And then you might say, like, I don't see any miracles in my, in my life. Well, you know, we kind of know why. Are you seeing from your eyes of fear or are you seeing from the eyes of faith? Because faith opens the door to the miracle. Faith opens the door to the miracle. Miracles happen when you participate with God. Signs happen when you participate with God. Wonders happen because you participate with God and you believe that he is able to do it. Just like we grow up believing that, oh, my dad is this and my dad is that. Okay, but what is God? What are you speaking of God? God, you are a way maker. You're a healer. You're a restorer. What are you speaking of God in this season as he got us sitting down? Are you complaining about the quarantine? Or are you like, God, I just want to see you different. You know what I'm saying? I want our relationship to be better. No other relationship really matters right now because I know in my relationship with you is good. Everything else around me, you're going to settle that too because that's what you do, right? So I just want to make a little declaration for us, right? So we're going to speak this of God, though, not of ourselves, because the miracle is already happening for us, in us, and through us because of who we are and who we connected to. Um, so we're going to write, so you are a God who performs miracles. Point blank period. God, you are a God that performs miracles. Imagine every day we wake up and just say, God, you are a God that performs miracles. God, thank you for performing miracles today. The power in our words, those words will just start trickling down to everything. Because wherever you need the miracle, God already knows. A lot of times you only have to speak certain things. God is such a need filler. He feels the need. He feels the need. He feels the need to the smallest thing. He feels the need. He show you things that you didn't even need to be shown but because he loves you so much that miracles just flow he's a lot he allow people to send you certain things right so god you are god to perform miracles god thank you for displaying your power amongst your people so in psalm 77 44 it says i declare that i'm expecting something major to happen in my life today because you're you got to get your expectation up what are you expecting? So if you don't know what you're expecting, you are, you're just going to take anything. The Bible tells us to be specific about our prayers. Have you been specific about the miracles that you've been believing, the signs that you've been wanting to see? Because you ask God for a sign, he's going to show you some. Because he responds to faith. He responds to faith. And then another one is today just might be a day for my miracle, my sign and my wonder to manifest in my life. Because God already said, these signs shall follow you. Signs are following me. 
I'm expecting miracles to happen. I'm expecting signs to happen. I'm expecting them to follow me, right? I declare that my faith is my currency to pay for my miracles. That'll preach on its own. I declare that my faith is my currency to pay for my miracles in the name of Jesus. Praise is my down payment for my blessings to overflow. And obedience is my ticket for the ride to destiny. Baby, that obedience will catch somebody. Yo, I was talking to Ash the other day, and we was talking about obedience. And Mike Todd has said something that hit me in my spirit, something, something stupid. He said, delayed disobedience is still disobedience. And I was like, that's so good. Because if he tell you to do it on Monday, and you was like, you know, Lord, I'm going to do it on Wednesday, you were still disobedient on Monday. You should have did it on Monday. So my whole heart was checked because it's like, if God said, hey, this is when I need you to do it, you don't know why he's telling you to do it then because your obedience may be tied to somebody else's breakthrough. Your obedience may be tied to somebody else's miracle. That's it. Delayed obedience is still disobedient. That is, that is preach. So you have to walk in that because your obedience is open a door for not only you, but for somebody else. And God is checking to see if I tell my daughter, if I tell my son to do this on right now, will they do it right now or are they going to wait? Because they don't know what's going to happen if they do it. But God is like, but do you trust me enough to know that I have better? Do you trust me enough to know that my hand for you, I will elevate you if you do what I say. Because we have a control issue. And God be trying to check us in there. That's why he's checking us in this right now, right? Um, so another declaration is, today I welcome endless possibilities. So this is just to get your expectation up. Today, Lord, I welcome endless possibilities. Endless. I welcome endless possibilities. I invite miracles and breakthroughs, and I usher the spirit of the true and living God to demonstrate his power in my life and to our nation. I know that was long, I'll read that over. Today I welcome endless possibilities. I invite miracles and breakthroughs and I usher the spirit of the true and living God to demonstrate his power in my life and in our nation. In the name of Jesus. And say like you be like, you know, Lord, this miracle is just taking too long. I don't even want it no more. Like you can just, I'm just good. But God is teaching us how to wait. Let patience have its perfect work so you can be complete and lacking nothing. Because when patience is working, it's building something in you. That patience is teaching you something different about yourself. And I think I shared earlier I have patience when I teach people how to braid. But take me outside of braiding. Oh, you gonna, we're gonna have some problems. Cause I'm trying to figure out why you take it so long for certain things. But I'm like, God, the same patience that I have when I teach people how to braid for two hours, let me have that same excitement and that same patience when I'm just living every day. And he's growing at Amy because I'm getting thrown certain tests. And I'm like, oh, you trying to test me. So I'm trying to pass these tests, okay? But a lot of times our miracles do take a long, our miracles do take a long time. You're like, God, I'm still waiting on my healing. Lord, I'm still waiting on this check to come through. God, my career, you said I was going to be this place. So you, you, you know, whatever you said, and the enemy's trying to get you to feel like God ain't say what he's saying, but God always, he doesn't go back on his word. And he can't rewind what he said because he's too good to do that, right? And so a lot of times we don't know how to wait for the promise we want to get that rush thing, right? Just like, you know, your boy Abraham and Sarah, honey, they had the maid servant get you, you know, Abraham got her pregnant and now they had an Ishmael and then that whole life was in disobedience. Let's talk about it now. They don't talk about how they was disobedient. They just say about how he had faith. He had faith, but he was still disobedient. Let's not forget, but the Lord blessed him. Your boy had to, I'm pretty sure he had to repent you know, Lord, I forgive me, Jesus. I, I slipped up, Lord. I, I went before you. 
But God, thank you for being gracious with me that my, that my miracle was still intact because his promise was, you're the father of many nations. That's a heavy call. You can't not walk in obedience because miracles are attached to your bloodline. His whole bloodline would have been affected, right? And so if you feel like your miracle is taking too long, stay in expectation of the God that we serve. God, I still believe you. God, you're still good. You're still faithful. Thank you that my expectation is being raised every single day. I don't see it yet, but I trust that you're doing it right now. You're orchestrating stuff. And I remember my pastor, he said something real good. And it made me think about how God really takes stuff out of our lives for a certain reason. He said, if you're waiting on something, look at it this way. You're believing God for a job, for an example. And you want the job so bad. And he gave this insight. He said, say that in the job that you're looking for, God gave you a clear picture. You're, say, you know how a lot of times in the movies, they take you out of the, they take you like you're an invisible person walking into the room that you want to be in. You're in that room and you get to see the glimpse of why God haven't given it to you yet. Remember that he's working on our characters and it's just as well he's working on your character, he's working on other people's stuff too. So a lot of times he knows that you can't be in a certain room with certain people. So he has to wait to fire them or to move them or to move them to a new city. Yo, that blessed me so well. I said, I see why you have us waiting because I couldn't be in the same space as this person or my attitude ain't ready yet. It's something that's not ready yet for the miracle that haven't just hit you yet. God, show me how to prepare for the miracle. Show me how to um, expect it, but not give up while I'm waiting, right? And even while you're waiting, worship. Worship break chains. And you speaking that thing into the atmosphere is just gonna change your whole life because God never forgets about us but we have to learn how to keep standing in faith because our faith keep producing. He said, I'll take you from faith to faith and glory to glory. That's the elevation that he wants us to have. That's really it. Faith to faith, our faith will go in him and glory because it goes back onto him, right? And also, if you, a lot of times we have to get of, rid of the old ideas that we have so that you can put a new idea in your mind about the miracle. Because old thoughts have to die for a new thought to form. He said, be transformed by the renewal of, the, of your mind. So a lot of the times we take on things of the world, we take on things in our family, our certain environments, but you started believing something that somebody else believed and that was never what you were supposed to do. We're supposed to make them believe what we believe. Because that's the miracle. Raise people's expectation up to yours. Raise people's conversation up to yours. That's the miracle. We change lives because we're disciples of Jesus Christ. He's the only thing that breaks chains, right? So you have to get, so a lot of times we just have to get rid of those old thoughts and then replace, uh, re, replace them with the new and the true thoughts. Because they can be new, but are they true? And who do those thoughts submit to, right? Because miracles are happening and we miss them. Because we're caught up to old things, old way of living. You allow the enemy to remind you all your old life. And he's like, the miracle is right here in front of you, but you're missing it because you're all in your feelings. And you're allowing your emotions to take you somewhere that it was never supposed to take you. But I can heal those places if you allow me to, because I'm not going to let this come past you, right? So our idea, so one idea must be dissolved before another one can take place. So the old thing had to be resolved for the new thing to take place. And so I just want us to write this down, um, just uh, just for your confession every single day, right? Um, and this is something that I did literally every single day, and literally my whole life changed. My whole life changed. Like, I've been in LA for two years, and people ask, like, how are you where you are in your career? And all I can say is, by the grace of God. I never wanted to move to LA, and my life has been blown ever since. Um, so I just start, I say, uh, miracles are happening right now. Consistent. Miracles are happening right now. They're happening right now. They're happening today. Miracles are happening right now. Um, uh, miracles are happening for me. They're happening for me. They are in my life. They're happening for me.
And the next one is, I invite miracles to come into my life. And the last one is, I am a believer of miracles. So miracles are happening right now. Miracles are happening for me. I invite miracles into my life and I am a believer of miracles. So when you start to believe for miracles in your personal life, believe and pray for uncommon levels of anointing and the power of God. And what I mean by that is because when a miracle comes into your life, it imparts something your life would change because the impartation that God allowed to come into your life. Miracles transform who you are, right? If you think about the story with a man, um, I don't know where he was, but I know that he, the lame man that couldn't walk and he got healed and that changed him. So miracles are supposed to change you. They're supposed to change who you are, how you live the course of your life. God connects you with somebody that you've been believing for uh, to connect to your life. It's going to change you and who you are. So, and a lot of times when you're walking in like different levels of your anointing, that breaks the yoke, right? Y'all see my mom with this bonnet on? <laughs> so when you're walking in different, when you're walking in miracles, you're also expecting a different level of anointing. So you're going to have more power. The power is going to increase in you because you're walking different. The miracle just exploded in your life. You have to because it's a, another elevation that you're walking in with God. Maybe it's praying to speak in tongues. Maybe it's praying to heal people as you're walking. Maybe you're trying to operate in that with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to pray, Lord. We just thank you. God, we just pray for uncommon, un irregular mind-blowing miracles, signs, and wonders to follow us, Father God. You said these signs shall follow those who believe. God, is there, if there's any unbelief in our lives about miracles, Father God, I just pray that you keep forming testimonies in us, Father God. Thank you for the miracle of healing. Thank you for the miracle of restoration. Thank you for the miracle of peace, because that's the miracle. Thank you for a miracle of finances, Father God. Thank you for a miracle of debt cancellation, Father God. Thank you for a, a miracle of paying student debt and tuition and, and bringing families by, back together in unity, Lord God. Thank you for all that. Thank you for the signs that you're showing us that you can do it, that as these signs keep following us, Father God. The wonders, the things that will blow our minds that we can't even conceive it, but we know it's you because the glory always go back to you. So God, as we are agreeing right now, because you said wherever two or three or more are gathered in your name that you're in the midst, and if any two shall agree on anything, you it will be given unto us. And so Father God, I just pray for unexpected miracles to fall into our lives. Thank you, Lord God, that you're on assignment to bless us, to heal us, to restore us. Help us to partner with you as our faith is partnering with heaven, because heaven responds to faith, Lord God. And help our unbelief. Help us unroot the old thoughts that's been trying to creep in or try to distract our relationship with you, with you to new thoughts. So we can open the door to new ideas, new creativity, new healing, restoration, new, new levels of peace, Father God. So Lord, we just thank you right now that those are available to us. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus. We partner with you, we honor you, and we just give you the glory. Thank you for allowing us to speak your name because our name is too small to speak. But we thank you that as Jesus did miracles, Father God, we receive those, but thank you for letting us know that great is he that is in us is he that is in the world. And so we just receive it by faith right now in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.